But the question is, do you want someone who's trigger happy to be your commander in chief? Someone who might unleash a nuclear war at the drop of a hat? Or do you so want someone who is reluctant to go to war, who knows that Congress only can declare war, that we shouldn't fight war under a UN banner, that we should only fight for our own national security, but there should be an open and public debate in Congress? This is what the Constitution says. The president doesn't carry you to war. Congress declares war. That's an important check and balance. And Ron Paul does care about Iran, but he does think that one other option besides preemptive war would be trying to contain them. When you uh, used the word trigger happy, did you have anybody in mind? I'm concerned about a lot of the Republican field in the sense that you want a commander in chief who's not careless. You know, you don't want someone who's reckless. You're in charge of uh, an arsenal of, you know, 10, 20,000 nuclear weapons. You want someone who really has the gravitas to say that war is a failure of policy and should not be our first choice. I would say one that springs to mind is, uh, you know, Santorum. I think he's a little over eager to drop bombs. He's also someone who never served in the military. Ron Paul served in the military. We'll use a a force against our enemies if required and if Congress approves of it. But I'm a little concerned about someone who didn't serve in the military like Santorum, who's a little overeager to bomb countries, because I don't think he's maturely thinking through the the process and the consequences of war. We'll take our last time out here. You're welcome to join the conversation. Here's how, 284-1040 or 800-469-4295. My in-studio guest, Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky. He is uh, he's supporting his dad in the presidential race. Your turn in a moment. <laughs> Lots of folks have questions for Senator Rand Paul. We're going to be talking with Pat Buchanan coming up shortly. Uh, this is Phil. Good morning, Phil. Hi, Jan. Hi, Hi. Senator. How you doing? Good. Um, I, I just want to say I, I can't wait for the day that uh, Senator Paul, uh, Senator Rand Paul, uh, runs for office for president. That's the that's, uh, prayer that I have. Um, the thing that I keep hearing, kind of ad nauseum, is that you know Ron Paul's foreign policy is so so bad. And I'm trying to figure out from all the Christian conservative set and and uh, you know the Republican whatever establishment how how long can we keep spending trillions and trillions of dollars to go all over the world and run these multi front wars? I mean, where where is it in the Constitution that uh, you know that that we have the authority in our in, in the president or anybody to go and do that stuff and continue with all this nation building? I just don't see how we can keep going like this. I'll give you just a quick example of some of the contradictions that are out there. We borrow $40,000 a second. We are borrowing $1.5 trillion a year as a government. We owe China over a trillion dollars. We actually give foreign aid to China. Another good question for Mr. Santorum. Why have you been voting for foreign aid for China? And yet when we look at the Straits of Hormuz, which are in the middle of our foreign policy now... The Straits of Hormuz, China gets 50% of their oil through the Straits of Hormuz, and yet for some reason it's the U.S.'s obligation to protect the Straits of Hormuz, and not China has no role in obligation at all. So we spend billions and billions of dollars protecting the entire world. China gets rich off of it. We owe China a ton of money, and then we provide the defense for China to keep the seas open so they can get their oil from Iran. When you as a senator stand there and you listen to the uh, uh, some of these things proposed, uh, uh, do you ever stand up and say, point of order? Uh, where Your dad used to do this all the time. No, con- You can't do this unconstitutional, unconstitutional, unconstitutional. He used to call him Dr. No for that reason. Are you going to be the next generation, uh, uh, Rand Paul, be the next generation of Dr. No? Uh, we can only hope so. <laughs> but uh, recently, a couple of things. We stand up and we try to eliminate foreign aid. Foreign aid is, if you ask the American people, 77% of everybody, Republicans, Democrats, and Independents, think foreign aid's a bad thing. We're borrowing $40,000 a second, and yet we're sending money overseas to countries. We even send China. We send China economic development aid. Can you believe it? China is growing like gangbusters, and we're sending them aid so they can develop economically. Wouldn't that be? an appropriate time for a filibuster? 
You would think so. We well, tried. Wait a second. I'm asking you. <laughs> we have tried. We have tried. And we have, uh, sometimes you can filibuster things. Sometimes it's an amendment. So we added an amendment to several things. But here's the sad thing. Of the Republicans in the U.S. Senate, we got only 20 votes. No Democrats. And only 20 Republicans uh, supported uh, reducing and eliminating foreign aid. I think the last amendment we tried was reducing foreign aid. But that's why when you vote for conservative, you need to be careful. It's not a big government conservative like San. Santorum, now, what, who's been a big promoter of foreign aid. I'm getting the idea that you think Santorum is now representing a threat. Well, you know, you're starting to see that some of the conservatives have gone here and there, and they're starting to, they're looking for someone who they think is their champion. But before they settle on somebody like Santorum, they need to realize that he was a big supporter of uh, Medicare Part D, the expansion of Medicare, big supporter of No Child Left Behind. I've seen him ask directly about the Department of Education. He's for it, whereas a lot of us who were big supporters of Ronald Reagan, my dad was one of the original supporters of Ronald Reagan, we still believe in eliminating the Department of Education, that there is no function at the federal level for that. But Rick Santorum is a big promoter of the Department of Education. He, in fact, voted to double the size of the Department of Education with no child left behind. So I'd call him a big government moderate, and so conservatives need to be very wary before thinking Santorum might be their champion. Uh, this is Rush.